Last week I did a video shooting with my Nikon D750 that I just had refurbished. I had someone come along and shoot behind the scenes in an engagement shoot and it was really fun, I had a good time making it. In that video some of you guys noticed that I had my A7 IV with me as well and uh, I did take some photos with it, I didn't show you guys in that video because I wanted to make a separate really quick video which is this one just comparing the files from like a 10 year old camera to the latest Sony mirrorless generation camera, the A7 IV. The A7 IV with the 24mm G Master is a lot more expensive than the D750 and the 24mm 1.8 that I was using on the Nikon. So in today's video, we're just gonna go through a couple of the images and show you side by side just how good the D750 files were compared to a new one. Bit of a spoiler alert, I do think the A7 IV files are a little bit better. Um, it could be down to multiple things, like the lens especially. However, this D750 held up really, really well. So before we get into the video, it's not sponsored by anyone other than myself. If you want to check out my presets, there's a link in the description. You'll see some of those in this video today. Otherwise, I'm going to show you the straight out of the camera versions and we'll just look at them side by side. Firstly, I didn't take that many with the A7 IV because the video was about the D750. And, uh, but you can see here the red ones are Sony's and the yellow ones are Nikon. Just for your guys reference, these are the final edited images that I used my presets with and gave them to the clients. Uh, all mixed with Sony and Nikon and everything all together. So you can get an idea of what it looks like. But for now let's stick to the ones where I have a comparison image like one where I've taken side by side so you guys can see the differences. And uh, the first thing you'll see is uh, the Sony I had on auto white balance, whereas the Nikon I had set to uh, like manually in Kelvin. So it's not a fair comparison, but we'll adjust them side by side. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've one start all the images that are like closest side by side with the Nikon and the Sony. As I said before, the yellow ones are Nikon, the red ones are Sony. Um, I've reset them all, so we're just going straight through. And one of the things you're going to have to remember is that uh, the white balance was on auto for most of the shoot with the Sony because um, I just didn't change it until later. Um, so we're going to adjust the white balance for each one. But this is straight out of the camera for all those files as well. So I'll put some of these in the description so you can download them for yourself as well. So as you can see, the Sony is uh, quite a bit cooler. So we'll just warm that up a bit. And yeah. The first thing I noticed was obviously the sharpness is quite different. Um, oh, like I said, I'm going to put these in the description so you can download them for yourself. Um, the Nikon is great, but the Sony is definitely noticeably sharper. Whether it's a good thing or not, I don't know. A lot of people think that um, you're, it's better off not being so sharp. It's up to you guys. So firstly, let's just go through and edit some of the Nikon ones. Um, these are the new 2023 presets. So you can see the Nikon is quite warm. So we need to cool that down a bit to about there. So that's about accurate. Now, if we go put that preset on the Sony file. Now, if we have a look at these side by side, when you're looking in the, at these preview files, there's not a lot of difference. When I zoom in, I do have grain on it because that's just what I like. And this kind of goes to the point where it doesn't really matter if the lenses are that crazy sharp um, but the Sony definitely looks a little bit sharper to me um, let's see if I can bring up the files there we go so you can see which cameras which this might change the right and left thing but if you have a look at the files you can see which one's Nikon and which one's Sony um, but yeah you can see this even with the grain there's a lot more detail in that one but it looks amazing for the price warm that one up again that's the Sony and then the Nikon you can see 24mm 1.4 G Master and the 24mm 1.8, which is the cheaper Nikon lens. This one was quite scratched up as well, so take that into account. Uh, but let's edit these up. Really nice and sharp. See that one actually missed focus. Oh, there we go, that's better. Let's get rid of that one. Okay. There we go. So in focus. Crazy dynamic range from the Nikon as well. Honestly, I'd be happy with either of these. Like I was saying in the video, 
really the main difference is you just have to work a bit harder to get the same kind of images and get as many in focus and all that kind of stuff with the Nikon. Whereas the Sony, it's kind of foolproof. Um, but once these load, um, let's turn the grain off. Yeah, so with the grain off, it's quite a dramatic difference how much more detail is in the Sony. It is a high mix megapixel count, but even when you take into the details and the hair and all that kind of stuff, the Sony is quite a bit sharper. Does it matter? I don't think so. Um, you can also see uh, the chromatic aberration, like the green fringing on both of the lenses. And the Sony's probably a little bit worse here, to be honest. Um, could be because it's 1.4 versus 1.8, but I'm definitely noticing more of it in the Sony. So this is straight out of the camera, you can see there. Um, obviously, slightly different exposures as well, but um, you are going to be able to see the difference in detail again. It's even more dramatic here. Um, just the details in their faces is far sharper at 100% with the Sony. Again, I'm not going to talk about sharpness anymore with this video. I don't think it matters, but in some situations it is going to matter. If you're shooting like a commercial client for a big print or something like that, the newer camera is going to look better. Um, and this is an obvious kind of comparison, really. No one's, I don't think anybody's clicking on this video expecting the D750 to be better. Um, the only thing that could subjectively be better is the colors in the Nikon. And it's totally up to you guys whether you like that. Some people are going to prefer the Sony colors and some people are going to prefer the Nikon. But the point of this video is to show you guys again, like in my last one, it doesn't really matter. You can create great images with either camera system. And yeah, you just have to work a little bit harder with the old ones. Again, the comparison of the edited files. Wait for them to load because the colors change. Yeah, much more detail. I do really like the grain. I know a lot of people criticize me for that. I don't care. It's up to you guys. It's very easy to turn off. If you don't like it, don't have it. Here's another two side by side. So these ones, you can see I changed the white balance by this point. Um, get them a little bit closer again. So Nikon straight out of the camera, great image. Sony straight out of the camera. Let's bring the highlights down on both all the way. You can see very similar dynamic range. The Sony might be a little bit better, but they weren't shot exactly the same settings or anything like that either. So take that into account. Let's drop a preset on it. Drop a preset on the Sony. see there again Sony on the left Nikon on the right a lot more detail colors it's up to you guys the white balance isn't perfectly matched so I think you guys get the point if anything what I really wanted to get across with this video being the part two to my D750 shoot was just how good the D750 files are compared to a latest generation camera that's 10 years newer a lot of people shooting professionally now weren't even shooting at all 10 years ago uh, so the technology has changed a lot and yeah, I just wanted to make this quick video. It's not a head-to-head -head shootout because it's just not fair. Sure, I'd rather shoot with my Sonys because they just make my job easier. And as a full-time professional, I don't want to be doing something that's unnecessarily more difficult than it has to be. Uh, but if I didn't have my Sonys, say that something happened to them and my D750 was around, I would have no issue whatsoever shooting a wedding with it. I didn't have an issue when they came out and I was shooting professionally with the D750s. Why would I have an issue with it now? So thanks for watching guys. Check the links in the description if you want to download some of the raw files or check my Lightroom presets out. And I'll see you in the next video soon.